Good morning, my friends. It is your friendly neighborhood medical student. My name is Ulysses Slay, and I come to you guys today in the spirit of holidays. Today, I'm going to be attempting to eat 12 beautifully glazed donuts, and I really do hope I can be able to say this at the very end of the video. But in the name of science, you see, I'm going to be taking my blood glucose levels before ingesting these 12 donuts, ah. one hour after, two hours after. And at the very end of the video, I want to discuss with you guys what these values are, what do they mean, go into a little bit of diabetes, and why is it so important to be able to screen for it, prevent it, and manage it. And let's get right to it. Lock and loaded. Ah! Right now is at 99. And now it's time to eat the donuts. And they look good. Got a little milk. Go pack it. I'm gonna do one hour, I mean, another 30 minutes and one hour. That's it. So I don't know how long I can keep this down for. All right, guys, so it's been 30 minutes where you are locked and loaded. Okay. We're at 128 now. Uh, before, kind of fasting, kind of not. It was, a, it was a 99. And then we see now mm -hmm. that after eating a lot of sugar, it went up to 128. It's not substantial, but we'll check again another hour and see where we're by. But it's been an hour. We are locked and loaded again. And let's see how how much sugar is now at this point. Drum roll. So we are climbing. So starting off in the morning, let's call that uh, fasting glucose. I had 99. Then. After eating a whole box of donuts, 30 minutes later, I went up to 128. And currently, one hour later, I am 100, almost 160, exponentially going faster. So the question is, what do these numbers mean? And where do I fall into? So that's what we're gonna talk about now. So now that all the fun's out of the way, let's talk about why any of this even matters. So by being able to take your blood glucose levels, we're able to determine whether you fall under normal range, increased range, or decreased range hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, or just normal glycemic. We're not gonna go into hypo, meaning decreased glycemia, because that video, that's very important and deserves a video on its own, but we're gonna focus on hyperglycemia. Now there's many causes for hyperglycemia, like an isolated episode with someone who ate too many donuts, someone who's under stress or infection, or it could be an indicator for someone who might actually have diabetes which is a very, very prevalent and important pathology that we're gonna go into a little bit right now. So to keep it very simple, diabetes is a problem with insulin. So insulin is pretty much just a peptide hormone that allows glucose to go inside cells and be consumed for the cell to produce its function. So essentially, you have the pancreas. You get a little pancreatic bud, we look inside, you're gonna find this islet of Langerhan, fancy name, it's just a little island, you're going to find all these cells. And towards the middle of the cells, you're going to find these beta cells inside the pancreas. These beta cells are going to produce insulin. So what ends up happening is that you have these little donuts floating inside your bloodstream, right? Glucose. And then he goes into someone's house, right? Let's say a muscle cell, so a myocyte. And he wants to go inside. But he's like, hey, I'm a donut. I don't have any hands. I can't open the door. So then insulin says, don't worry, bro. My friend, I got you. I'm not a donor, I could open doors for you. So the insulin goes, opens the door, the glucose or the donut just rolls in there, you know, because he just rolls, and then he's in the floor, in the living room, and then everybody goes and eats them. <laughs> and he fulfills his purpose. Everybody in the house has a lot of energy, and they, could, and they continue doing what they normally do. That's the overall process. So in diabetes, you have type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is that there's a destruction, autoimmune destruction of the pancreas. Type 2 is that there's a resistance to insulin, and that's pretty much it. 
But before going more into diabetes, I want you guys to see the values, I want you guys to understand them, and know how we diagnose diabetes and how we screen for it. So, go, go, go. All right guys, excuse the dirty board, but when we're talking about how to diagnose and screen for diabetes, we think of four different ways. One way is to take a random blood glucose level, meaning you pick someone from a random population, you pick them, and then you decide to test their glucose levels. If that person randomly happens to have greater than 200 milligrams per deciliter, that's already very, very, very good indicator. Now, if they happen to have symptoms of diabetes, like they're peeing too much or eating too much or um, they're drinking too much water, then this person's positive. Number two, it's the opposite of a random. So now we're controlling the person and we're doing it fasting. We tell them to come overnight fast, come to the clinic, I'm gonna check your glucose levels. So if the person's over 126, that's positive. Normal, it's less than 100. Anything in the middle, it's pre-diabetic. You gotta do the exam two times in order for it to actually be uh, confirmed. Number three is similar to number one, but we're taking the aspect of random out. So we're gonna give the person an oral uh, glucose tolerance test of two hours. So that means that we're gonna give them 75 grams of glucose, of oral glucose. Two hours later, we're gonna measure their levels and see how they're doing. So, if after two hours, they are over 200, similar to number one, that's an indicator, and normal is less than 140. Anything in the middle is pre-diabetic. You could, you could do this exam one time to get the diagnosis. And lastly, which is the hallmark gold standard for diagnosing, is a hemoglobin A1C. So hemoglobin A is regular hemoglobin of A2, beta 2, globulins. C, I like to think of candy, because I'm thinking of diabetes here. So essentially, this is how much glucose has been attached to hemoglobin in the last three months. So that's why it's the best indicator, because it's telling you how much glucose is attached to hemoglobin in the last three months. So we're not talking about random, we're not talking about just that one fasting day, we're talking about three month period. This is calculated in percentages. If we find that there's a greater than 6.5%, normal is less than 5.7. Anything in the middle, it's pre-diabetic. And this, we could do it two times. And this is the one that we really wanna focus on. To conclude this video, Briefly, to summarize diabetes, we talked about what it is, essentially. How it presents is three Ps. Polyuria, polydipsia, polyfascia. Polyfascia. Meaning, you're peeing too much, you're drinking too much water, and you're eating too much food. <laughs> if it sounds like someone you know, <laughs> let's go take a glucose level. All right, they're gonna someone who's gonna be woken up in the middle of the night because they, they have to use the restroom, someone who has increased appetite, and it keeps peeing all the time. In terms of a chronic damage, we're going to see problems with the eyes, the kidneys, and the feet. So eyes, kidneys, feet. Eyes, kidneys, feet. It's like a Margarita dance. Eyes, kidneys, feet. I also like to throw in the heart. But essentially what's happening is that all this increased glucose in your body is causing this microvascular damage. So you're going to end up with retinopathies, nephropathies, and neuropathies. What I mean by neuropathies in the feet, is essentially that you have damage in the peripheral nervous system. So you have very classically gonna find an elderly person who has loss of sensation, numbness in their lower extremities. Very commonly you get a diabetic person who uh, gets scratched, gets lacerated, gets step on something and they don't even notice it. Or if you're anything like me, you, you take your, your demon dog to your good friend's house and he goes and he pees on his grandma's foot and then she happens to be diabetic so then you're in a moral dilemma, should you shamelessly tell her my dog peed on your leg or should you just run away and then pretend like it never happened? I obviously just ran away. No, no, we told her she showered and she hates the dog and it's not allowed to go again. Well, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys took something from it, but more than all, I want you guys to enjoy your holidays. I want you guys to be happy and I wish that this year was amazing and the next one's even better. 
So with that being said, catch you on the next one and eat a lot of donuts.